All right, here we're going to look at oil and sweat glands. And hopefully by the end of this, you'll be able to provide a comparison between oil producing glands and sweat producing glands. Now I say oil, this is actually vegetable oil, but just trying to give you that visual comparison be between the two. Most of these are going to be located, as you see here, in the dermal region of the skin. So starting with our sebaceous glands, or oil glands, they occur over the entire body except the palms and soles. They're simple alveolar glands, and the holocrine secretions, they basically, the entire cell will break up to form a secretion. We're going to see a comparison between oil and sweat glands uh, later in this video. These oil glands secrete this oily substance called sebum, and they're mostly associated with the hair follicle, as we see here. So here's our sebum, and they're associated with that hair follicle. Again, that image of the skin comes back, and hopefully it's starting to make more sense with each video that you watch. So the sebaceous glands, that oil-producing glands, what does the sebum actually do? Well, you can see it kind of it here, and it's providing a lubrication to the hair and also the surrounding skin. It's also softening both of these regions. Now, it is an oil, so it's hydrophobic, and it also provides some waterproofing, some resistance to water of both the hair and skin. And it's being secreted and covering all this region. It can also collect dirt to help maintain cleanliness of the skin and overall health of the individual, for example. You see, again, located here is our sebaceous gland. Here's our hair follicle. Here's a sebum releasing to the surface of the skin. Now, sweat glands. Just to take a step here on sweat glands, so we're going to do a little comparison. There's two main types. They occur over the entire skin surface except nipples and parts of external genitalia, and they prevent overheating. They can produce, in total, up to 500 cc's, cubic centimeters, you can also think about as milliliters, to 12 liters of sweat per day. And that is going to be mostly water. And they are could be activated or produce these secretions due to heat or also stress is another way that these sweat glands can be activated. And here's just an example of one located here within the dermal layer of the skin. Now sweat glands are pseudoriferous glands. The merocrine or echocrine glands, most abundant sweat gland, they produce what we call true sweat. It's about 99% water with some salts. They contain some traces of metabolic waste, up to 2% urea. But not really any more than that, so you get the 99%. They open through pores, and their role is thermoregulation, so they help them cool the body. They're widely present in the skin. The 500 can be located in just a single square centimeter on the body. I see an image here of that secretion. Again, this is occurring through pores, and you're going to notice the comparison between the other two, how it's very different. So American here. Also, echocrine, the kind of interchangeable terms, these sweat glands are being secreted in this case. Now, another type of sweat glands, the apocrine, are the, the apex or top of the cell breaks off. So, we can think of that kind of apex, AP, ring to apex, that top of the cell. Contain organic molecules that decompose over time, resulting in this odorous secretion. So, because the cell is breaking off, we're putting this odor, because we have a lot more than just water being kind of released here. Uh, ducts open into the hair follicles, absent before puberty. So this occurs only after puberty do these particular glands develop. They're present in the armpit and genitalia areas, and they release proteins, lipids, in the form of steroids. <clears throat> so because we're getting proteins and lipids being released in parts of the cell, this is what's producing that odor. It's a lot more than just water with a little salt in it. This is actual portions of the cell. The last one here, going back to oil glands. This part is in these orders, so you can add a little bit of a comparison between all three of them. Halocrine, the entire cell is breaking down. <clears throat> it's releasing the sebum, which is an oil lipid base. Remember, that's hydrophobic. It's lubricating the skin and retards bacterial growth. Both benefits to the body and skin. Found on the face, chest, and back regions. So mature cell dies and becomes a secretory product. So how do all these kind of three compare? <clears throat> well, here's a nice summary slide showing the secretion versus the cell being pinched off, kind of that producing that odor. And here we have the entire cell basically being broken down, producing that sebum, which is that oily substance. Lastly, for comparison, our sebaceous or oil glands versus our apocrine and our um, eccrine glands. Well, we have to look here at our images. So some are separated out from the hair follicle. 
And here's our sweat gland located with the hair follicle. And again, our oil gland also associated with that hair follicle. Our um, echocrine glands, or apocrine glands, located here. One is independent, which is the echocrine we see here in the blue. And our apocrine glands here are associated with the hair follicle. Keep in mind, don't forget, the sebaceous or oil glands are also associated with the hair follicles we see here. So again, what's associated with the hair follicle, what's associated without, great for identification purposes, and can also help you remember where they may or may not be found within the body.